Okay, thanks, Deepak, uh, for joining me out here. Uh, I'm sure, you know, with the wealth of experience that you bring to the table, uh, there will be a lot of learnings uh, that you'll be sharing uh, with the folks out here. Um, so, you know, uh, from a broad theme standpoint, uh, considering that the rich experience that you have in the banking industry, uh, you know, I just wanted to try and understand, and being the nature of the business that's traditionally considered to be, you know, so-called legacy, uh, having been around for so long, how does the tech, uh, you know, uh, technologies being adopted in this legacy business, if you can some, throw some light in terms of uh, the adoption process of technology and how, you know, uh, specifically you have seen the journey out there. Thanks, Keir, for that question. And uh, thank you, uh, Exchange for Media, for giving me the opportunity. Happy to be here and share some thoughts and perspective which could be of some value to the audience here. Um, so I think the tech uh, uh, space is only constantly going to evolve and uh, we're going to see a surge on uh, newer offerings or evolution on the tech side in a big scale and in a bigger way. Uh, you know, it was very interesting to see some of the AVs that were just played and, uh, you know, it's insightful to see how tech is coming together, how the whole AI playbook is uh, enabling some of the rudimentary uh, behavior that marketeers would struggle with. So it goes perfect with the theme of agility that CMOs or marketeers are today seeking. Uh, specifically to the uh, context of, uh, you know, our discussion uh, when I look at and, you know, we were talking about briefly in terms of acquisitions and retentions and how tech is enabling it. I was reminded of the whole genesis of humankind, you know, we were basically, uh, 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 you know, uh, genesis was of a hunter behavior where we would go out and hunt for uh, food and all sorts of means to survive. And then it came to self-producing through farming, right? Um, and today, if you look at a farmer's life, he tends to uh, kind of optimize his yield, which we use in our day-to-day uh, -day brand language as ARPU, uh, by uh, looking at what seasonality, what kind of a produce will do well. And therefore, he changes gears in terms of the seeds that he sows in the, in the, in the soil, um, you know, in his farmland. And uh, he looks at it at the data inputs of weather condition, seasonality, demand cycles, and that's how he goes about it. Now, take it forward, and we look at it in our uh, tech conversation. It's about hunters being replaced with acquisition and farmers being replaced by retention. I think the world has only changed the vocabulary, but I think more or less the behaviors are the same. And what tech does for us today is uh, allows us scalability, allows us constant optimization, but just like the farmer, we have to keep uh, doing the, uh, you know, toiling the hard work that is required to understand, uh, you know, what are we really seeding in, how is it going to evolve. And uh, I think that's where the tech playbook uh, comes and makes it very interesting for marketeers in today's time. Yeah, yeah, an amazing analogy between hunters and farmers and, you know, acquisition and retention uh, debug out there. Uh, you know, quite, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, people would be able to get that uh, right as well out there. Um, and, you know, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, building a MarTech stack, uh, for example, there are so many options that are there out there. Again, within that, there are, you know, legacy players that are there in the market. There are, you know, new age tech companies, tech first companies. There's a lot of buzzword around AI, I'm sure. And with so many choices for, for that instance, you know, that someone has, uh, how do you go around building a Martech stack? Or, you know, for, for that instance, anyone in the audience, if, you know, they are already CMOs or they are probably, you know, trying to buy some of these technologies, what are the things that come to your mind that someone should consider while building a stack, uh, you know, on their side? So, um, you know, tech is very exciting. And um, in the course of that excitement, I think we should not lose sight of what is set out to serve as a purpose. Um, I think some of the challenges, and, and obviously I've gone through the journey and I can relate to uh, what marketers, fellow marketers would probably experience, is, uh, you know, the, the undoubtful challenge around the fact that it's deemed as capex, right? So there is an upfront payout which is extremely high and, um, you know, the leadership or the decision makers tend to kind of seek inside on how this is 
getting uh, recovered in terms of the efficiency it promises. Uh, so I think that's where the primary challenge sets for uh, as a deciding part. The second piece, like you touched, that there are legacy players and there are new age players. So the today's reality, thankfully, is that uh, you have challenger brands and you have legacy brands, right? And this is true for all businesses. So marketeers are therefore in a much better position today uh, to actually do a true evaluation rather than get restricted. I know legacy players come with a lot more credibility, but there are new emerging solutions which could be uh, you know, addressing the cost efficiency. Uh, and also as technology has evolved, some of the API stacks ensure that you can pick up best of all uh, solutioning around you. Um, so, you know, just like, uh, you know, a couple of decades back when uh, one would find it very difficult to take a ready to purchase unit of a high-end uh, desktop, uh, that's the era when desktops were, uh, you know, I'm talking about the uh, early, late 90s. Uh, where they were the, um, you know, really the uh, reference point for technology on the computing side. Uh, you would hear people who would do the assembly. And that assembly used to be, uh, you know, customizing those solutioning based on what's the kind of functional role it's going to deliver for you. So whether it meant, uh, you know, you needed a higher uh, GB or a RAM or processor speed based on the kind of work or computation you did. Similarly, today, the tech stacks on the MarTech side, based on the kind of business you are in, the kind of consumer uh, stock that you are operating on, and the kind of hunting that you are progressively instilling, because not every business is alike, you can take that plunge of faith and look at, uh, you know, taking in certain combination of, you know, it could be a legacy, a new age, or a new age, uh, because today technology has evolved to a level where there is a certain amount of efficiency which has become a hygiene factor when you're solutioning around MarTech. Uh, but I think that's a journey each of us have to go through. Uh, but if you ask me, is there an alternative to not looking at this as a, uh, as a focus point? I would say no. Uh, please understand that when you reflect back yourself as a role of a marketeer, you're also a consumer first. So look at your own journey as a consumer. You're engaged with multiple touch points. You're engaged with multiple uh, brands. And at every stage, you are either experiencing a wow factor or you're experiencing a friction. And that could result in you taking decisioning, which could have otherwise decades back stuck, uh, you know, stood the test of time and made you brand loyalist. Today, you are dropping brands um, you know, on the go, just because you had a negative experience. And more so that consumers today are well empowered, unlike in the previous era, where he can actually vent it out. And that vent out is influencing future purchase cycles, future loyalty, future brand, uh, you, know, uh, you know, people who could possibly uh, opt in for your product are today reacting to all of these touch points. So I think that's where you need to understand the amalgamation and need to invest in tech and how you bring this together. Yeah, yeah, so true. And the way you mentioned, like, you know, customer experience definitely comes to the forefront uh, in this case, you know. Uh, and considering the new age tech first audience, the digitally native audience that, uh, you know, and definitely we live in an era that there is digitally native audience and there are, you know, uh, audience probably in your space specifically in the investment space for example where you have people uh, who have you know uh, who might not prefer digitally uh, digital involvement too much they might still want to call an RM and you know talk to them for example uh, so how do you you know build uh, your stack or you know your customer experience with so diverse population and considering that you are sitting on a gold mine of customer data with so many different touch points that they prefer separately. Uh, how do you ensure that customer experience across these touch points are being covered? Uh, and definitely, you know, from people preferring website to offline mediums to, you know, some talking to someone to even an app-based, uh, you know, digitally native user as well. Uh, so what's, how, how do you go around segmenting and, you know, building all of this? So, um, 
you know, our category or per se the financial category has largely evolved over years in terms of a brick and mortar outreach. Uh, we as a player, uh, you know, we obviously got incepted as one of the very early fintechs to be uh, the buzzword that you hear today because we, in, we initiated what is the online uh, access to capital markets. So our journey began on the online space, right? So we have a sizable base of today, 8 million plus consumers who have actively uh, engaged uh, for their various needs because we've evolved from pure uh, solutioning around, uh, you know, trading to today investing. Today, people can buy insurance. They can buy, uh, you know, they can avail lending products, including credit cards. So we have almost 40 to 45 plus products on our platform. Uh, so in that sense, uh, you know, we've always uh, been on the digital journey. Uh, but having said that, uh, you're right that uh, when you look at the generational referencing, uh, the digital native tends to be a lot more uh, comfortable in an environment where he can access information, he can access uh, or he can make his trade decisions on the go. But uh, while he is empowered with these solutioning, uh, we cannot at any point in time ignore the one who's uh, probably there is a generational gap with, but may not be as savvy or as comfortable, but is equally evolving today because, uh, you know, one thing that pandemic did for a lot of uh, people, and I think that's generational agnostic, is that there was a forced adoption. And that forced adoption led to people experiencing for the first time uh, where their smartphones, which were gifted to them by their loved ones, moved from being a traditional reference point of just looking at a message or calling to actually using up for content on YouTube and you know, uh, getting to subscribe for uh, services like e-commerce because you were locked down, so you had to order stuff, you had to use the app and that only you could do it on your mobile. And I think those things have uh, uh, acted as trigger points for those generational to come up. Uh, but yes, uh, today it's not about uh, what I can do for my consumer. Uh, it's about ensuring that I'm there where the consumer is. So there is inward outward to outward inward where you need to kind of know where all your consumer accessibility is uh, and this is true not only from a Nartech perspective, but also from a outreach to a consumer. You cannot say I will uh, ensure that I will just get visible on a certain set of media vehicles. Uh, I need to know, first of all, who my consumer is, link it back to the product that I'm talking about, link it to the intelligence of my competition, link it to my user behavior and his journey and preferences and then start uh, you know, building together a robust strategy on how do I get into making him aware about my solutioning. So I think um, uh, while there is inherent gap, but I think that's bridging in. And us as a business, uh, we ensure that we are uh, accessible to a consumer across all touch point. We focus more on ensuring that the CX value, it's constantly evolving, so a lot of data points across his journey, the, the way he is interacting on our digital assets, uh, the friction he possibly is facing when he's engaged on our website, on our app, through the heat maps, uh, reverse data, the click uh, or the event tracking data that gives us his uh, challenge around some of the uh, events that we've set up, his subsequent uh, journey towards moving into different stages, the kind of hovering of his icons that are happening on the various product category are all rich insights on a real-time basis. Uh, thankfully, because of the uh, investment we've done on the MarTech stack, uh, that allows us to keep uh, course correcting and creating uh, agile uh, journey, uh, agile uh, cohorts-led uh, uh, targeting, which keeps improving on, on a regular basis as we move forward and helps us to get a lot more uh, sniper casted on understanding how my consumer is behaving and then use that reverse insight to then ape it on a look-alike when it comes to future customer acquisition so that we are in a lot, lot more uh, 
uh, not at a very start start stage, but at a midpoint to move him forward and uh, build that combination of both acquisition and retention. Yeah, you touch upon very well in terms of you know uh, how your retention play or how your existing customer base is actually something that's feeding on to those lookalikes and bringing in the right audience as well. Um, so that definitely brings out you know the importance of retention and the insights driven through your retention strategy and how you tie it back to your acquisition and that's very important to make sure that you are you know getting the right audience which has longer LTVs things like those right so uh, you know uh, again you also touched upon the fact that being agile being futuristic uh, you know there are so many bright young minds out here who probably want to you know be in in your shoes uh, in the future, what would be your advice? What would be the kind of skill sets that they need to be building uh, in order to be a futuristic CMO like yours? So, uh, I don't know how much I can really advise, but I can share with my own experience. I think sitting in this kind of an audience a couple of years back, I would be enamored with the, all the fancy terminologies and jargons and, and the text referencing that would keep evolving in forums. So one thing is don't need to really worry about it. It's not so complicated as it's cited. Uh, what probably you need is, uh, you know, get into understanding the, what is the purpose it's gonna serve for me? And be conscious about your category and your consumer. So look at the problem from the category lens, look at the problem from the consumer lens, and then look at the enablers. Don't just go with a fanciful word of technology and say, I need to put this in place. You need to understand your business reality, your uh, consumer reality, and your potential future casting that you are set out to achieve. Link it back to taking solutioning. There is no replacement of, I do not need to look at tech. You definitely need to look at tech. But at the same time, you can look at it with a lot more meaningful uh, addressal of the core purpose for which your brand stands for and then get into solutioning around it. Today, thankfully, uh, post-pandemic, what's changed is that the whole digital playbook has, has moved up in scale. There are enough and more solutioning coming in. There are a lot of new age startups, players, that are ready to bring you that solutioning, so you don't need to rely only on set legacy brands. Uh, the new age players uh, are very much also uh, delivering the similar promise. But yes, uh, it requires you to be agile. It requires you to be up to speed at the same time. Uh, what's important is please come with a mindset of a experimenter. Uh, today, the difference between a scientist and a marketeer is, is very limited. Uh, you know, as a marketeer, this is exciting time. Uh, you get to play up with so many different sets of data points which are painting a much more sharper picture for you of your consumer and category. At the same time, you've got enablers like tech that can take you to scale. But what you need to have that mindset is to constantly experiment. Even in our own business, we run agile squads to constantly look at because with 45 set of products and multitude of data coming in, we have to be conscious like that farmer looking at seasonality, who's the kind of an audience that opts for you know, a particular type of an asset class, uh, or he's someone who looks at new products more evidently than someone who doesn't, who's got higher risk ability, what's been his past purchase behavior, what's been his trigger point, what is the channel at which he looks at, uh, you know, engaging most. All of this today, while may sound very, uh, you know, uh, overwhelming, but the fact is it's all now solution through a tech lens. It's available in analytics. It's available to give it to you as insight, which you just need to spend time and get familiar. And there's no right and wrong part. Every one of us have evolved or evolving. I would not say anyone has evolved. I would say I still evolve every day. Uh, you know, when I go into forums, I listen to other speakers. When I meet people, I probe those conversation. And I think that's the beauty of being a marketer that you can take that, um, you know, step to probe and, and build on those hypotheses and constantly evolve your own understanding and thinking. So true, so true. Uh, I hope that, you know, like going back to basics is something that's important while technology plays an enabling function out there. 
uh, but you know the base of marketing which is experimentation never goes away and uh, lastly you know deepak just one last question i think you you have been meeting so many people uh, going to some of these events i'm sure that you come across so many new trends in technology what are the ones that you see uh, you know or you would you are right now adopting or you would want to adopt uh, going forward in the technology space um, you know what excites you the new toys so uh, in my mind i mean and this is my individualistic uh, perspective on some of the data that i keep seeping in or or observing um, you know the online is definitely the new offline and metaverse is going to be the new online and i think that's where uh, some real exciting work is happening in the backdrop um, yes there are pros and cons that keep coming out but i am excited to look forward so while uh, you know we're talking about martech there is already uh, brands who are experimenting their journeys or experimenting how they reach out to the audience uh, who's in that zone i think some bit of this metaverse behavior is very evident in the young emerging uh, kids in the household who have opted into these uh, platforms like uh, uh, roblox and all of it and you kind of see them taking on avatars very easily and as parents you still struggle on figuring it out and then you have generation that at um, you know different age groups who kind of de-stresses by getting into gaming console and and uh, getting into that zone right so some of these data points uh, give you a sense when you say that uh, you need to be aware where your consumer is uh, and that world is also evolving uh, with whatever we hear so yes that's the new exciting phase so i think web 3.0 is going to be very exciting and uh, yet to learn a lot but i think that's the place that i'm looking forward to thanks thanks for your insights um, thanks for being a wonderful audience everyone